Everybody doing this Super Bowl weekend? <laughs> I'm not very excited. I, uh, I need to keep things in perspective. <laughs> I, I've been watching his sunrises, and he's a Broncos fan too. Sure about that. We uh, we've been preaching through these values that we've come up with here at Step Seven, and for the last few weeks, we've been preaching on on Christ-centered spiritual growth. Okay. <clears throat> we started off talking about our need to die to ourselves. It's not about us anymore, it's about Jesus, it's about those that are around me. I need to serve him and them. We then spoke about this path that Peter tells us to get on. A path that starts with faith and ends with love. We followed that up, Tom preached a wonderful message on the fact that it's all about Jesus. Christ-centered spiritual growth obviously is all about Jesus. And then last week, I preached on, on, on faith and uh, obedience. The, the closer I get to the Lord, the more I recognize that His ways are, are the best ways. Today we're going into a, a new value. We're going to talk today about community. And it's something that we value in a huge way around here at Step 7, community. And I'm real excited because as I, I started to do just a little bit of, of Bible research this last week, <coughs> it is just so obvious how community is a God idea. It's his idea, his way of doing things, community. I, I, I was real excited to see that. It starts in, in Genesis and it ends in Revelation. And it was just lovely to see how important community is to him. And our, our verse of the day here, uh, uh, the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now I want to clarify something here. This is not about marriage, this verse here. It doesn't say, I will make a man, I will make a wife, suitable for them. It says, I will make what? A helper. helper. Let's, let's keep that clear here. This isn't about finding a mate. This is about community. You have community right here. We have helpers. I know there are, are people that are, are divorced or widowed or not, they don't have someone in their lives. That's not what we're talking about here today. We're talking about, about community. Let's, uh, let's have a prayer. Father God, we, we just love you, Lord. We love you. We, we thank you. We need you. Thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day, a day that you've asked us to set apart and to be with each other and to be with you. And Lord, I just pray as always that you would, you would speak to me, speak through me, Lord, during this time. And we just love you, Lord, and we, we pray this as always in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Community. It's a God idea. It's not good for the man to be alone. We see community starting right here in Genesis 2. I, I think about step seven, and I, I ask you, what, what is step seven? And we have, a, we have a lot of answers to that question. We could, we could say that step seven is a it's a small group ministry. We could say it's a group of sober living homes. We could talk about this time here. We could say it's a church. 
We can say it's a Sabbath morning celebration. And you know, I really don't care what you call it. I believe it's all of those. I believe it's every one of those. But I also believe it's what? It's a community, you guys. This is a ministry. This is a, a, a community. Maybe this is a, a community celebration that we do on Sabbath morning. I, I really don't care how we label it. But I do like the thought, the picture of a, of a community. <laughs> we, we have our, our vision statement, and we have our our values that we have just recently put together. And our vision statement says, a Christ-centered vision of freedom, strengthened by the leadership skills taught in our small groups, our sober living homes, and our Sabbath morning celebration. I, uh, I want to point out something. There's community, and I just love this. Small groups. That's a community. So we're living homes. Sabbath morning celebrations. I, I love the effects that a loving community has on the injured people. I, uh, <coughs> the other day I went to dictionary.com and looked up the, the definition of community and I, I wrote it down here. And I love what this one, there's quite a few of them, but this one kind of stuck out to me. Definition of community. It says, a social, religious, occupational, or other group sharing common characteristics or interests. Okay? Mm. Let me read that again. A social, religious, occupational, or other group sharing common characteristics or interests. It then goes on to say, and perce perceived or perceiving itself as distinct in some respect from the larger society with which it exists. I love that definition. We are a distinct community here at Step 7. A community is part of a larger society. There's a whole lot of communities that make up our society. We have some distinctions. We, we minister in a big way to people that are struggling with addictions. We are all about Jesus Christ. We come together on the Sabbath. We are a community, a distinct community. And I love that. There is healing within community. You know, this last year we, we closed the ranch down the center over here. And Tom and I got a little bit of grief from some people for doing that. And we closed it down for a, a couple of reasons. Number one was mostly financial. But we also closed it down because as, as time went by, Tom and I started to notice some things. We noticed that we were having just as much success working with people in our small groups and our sober living homes. At the ranch, the idea was that we would have an individual for 28 days. Now, some of them stayed much longer. Some of them checked into our homes, which is awesome. And I don't want to put this down at all. I know there's some guys here that are very near and dear to the ranch. It's got a very warm spot in their heart. But the fact was, is, we had them for 28 days. And we, uh, we noticed that many of the guys that came for 28 days would disappear and we would not see them again and that would always worry me. I sit here and I look around the room right now and I see some incredible success stories. Amen. And we have every bit as many success stories from just guys coming to small group and checking into our homes. It's very obvious to the two of us 
that the longer we can get someone plugged into our community and staying with us, the better chances that they're going to remain sober. We've got men in here, we've got folks in here, women, that have been sober for years now. And they didn't do it through the ranch. I, I worry when people start to fade away a little bit. I look back on my using. I started drinking when I was probably about 13 years old. I was drinking consistently a year or two after that. I was sticking needles in my arms in my early teens. And in the beginning, I was part of a community in doing that. It was a party. Where's the party tonight? But I think a lot of you will be able to relate to this. That community broke down after a time. And I found myself later on isolating and using. Drinking and doing drugs all by myself. And I'll tell you something, Satan had his claws in me. Community, a loving community. Turn please to, to Matthew. I want to look at a, just a few verses real quick like here today that point to how God is all over the community in our lives. Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Who's got a page number? 695. 695? Yeah. <coughs> and many of you will recognize this is a pretty famous verse here. Matthew 18, verse 20. It says, For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Okay? Where two or three come together in my name, Jesus says he will fellowship with us. We are talking about small groups, community, where two or three gather. Jesus will join us. Turn to uh, Psalm 133. Psalm 133, right in the middle of the book. And I'm going to read the whole chapter. <laughs> All three verses. <laughs> <coughs> Psalm 133. I'll start in verse 1. It says, How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Keep your finger there. That is what? That's our sober living homes. Community. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Let's read on. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, <clears throat> down upon the collar his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Beautiful verses. But verse 1 jumps off the page. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Our homes I've seen some incredible things happen in our homes. And we like to think that there's unity in our homes all the time, and that's far from the case. And that's part of the healing process that happens in the homes. You put a bunch of men together in a home, and you're going to have some disunity. It happens. Sometimes, but rarely, Tom and I have to intervene, mostly. <laughs> really serious and passionate. <laughs> <clears throat> but very rarely, usually the guys take care of it themselves. You know, it's amazing, and I praise God for this. Over the years that we've had those homes, we have not had one fist fight. It's been close. It's been close, but we have not had one fist fight. And if you think of 
five or six years, a bunch of men living Amazing. in a home that there hasn't been a fist fight. That's huge. Yeah. Huge. Turn to um, Hebrews, book of Hebrews, towards the back. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. Community, it's a God idea, my friends, all throughout Scripture. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 24. Beautiful stuff. It says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us consider that. How we can encourage each other, it tells us. And then 25. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. The good Lord's coming, I believe soon. As you see the day approaching, we are to encourage one another. And we are to not quit meeting. And you know, I love our praise time here in the mornings. Because that's just so encouraging for people to come in here and to hear the thanks. And again, this, this is a time of celebration. I think communities should come together and celebrate. And we always have the cross of Christ to celebrate. I don't care what's going on in your life. This too will pass. Jesus is coming and he loves you. And he's coming to take you home. And we should celebrate that as a, as a community. Amen. I read a book this this last year, and I'm going to read it again because it's a really awesome book. It's very well researched. It's a little bit maddening. The title of the book is called Chasing the Scream. And it's a book about how our government, our, our penal system, has handled the drug war <laughs> over the last 70 or 80 years. Chasing the Screen, fascinating book. And they did, a, they did an experiment in this book. Some of you guys have heard about this. I talked about it in a small group before. But they took, they took some rats, and they would isolate these rats. They would put a rat in a cage, isolate it all by himself. And they would give him the choice of two waters to drink. One was good water, pure water. The other was laced with either cocaine or heroin. And these rats, invariably, they would all choose the drug-infested water. And they would drink till they died, if they were isolated. They then put together a community they actually called it Rat Park. <laughs> and it was a, a big cage with a lot of rats, with the little running wheels that they could get on, with little tubes that they could crawl around. There was community, there was friends within this Rat Park. And they would grab one of these other rats that was in isolation and addicted. And they would introduce this addicted rat into Rat Park. They also, within Rat Park, gave these rats the option of the two drugs, or the two waters. And none of the rats would drink the bad water. In fact, the addicted rat, and this would happen fairly quick, it didn't take long, would quit choosing the drug-infested water. Amen. And he would go back to drinking the good water. Incredible, incredible illustration about community, my friends. Maybe we should change our name around here. Rat Pack. Right, right. I'm not, excuse me, but I've got to go to Rat Park. They 
got seven wonderful steps, but they call it Rat Park. <laughs> I get excited, my friends, when I see people come through the door here and they recognize the community here. They hear the laughter, they, they see people dressed in shorts and tennis shoes. They see people interrupting me in the middle of my sermon. And I really get excited when they come up to me later on and say, Pastor, I've, I've never seen a church like this. This is really different. Amen. Mm -hmm. That lets me know that we're doing something right around here. Yeah. Yeah. And I owe you all a big thanks for that. Because this is all about community. And I believe one of the greatest cures for addiction, and I don't care what it is, it's just not drugs and alcohol. We all have our struggles. We all have something we put in front of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Every one of you should be here. We all practice idolatry at times. And I believe with all of my heart that one of the greatest cures for addiction is a loving Christian community. Amen. 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 You know, I, I look around at at some rehabs that are out there. Cindy could be a very good witness to that. She works in a rehab. And it's almost across the board. Someone will come into rehab and they will be bummed out. They'll be physically hurting. They'll be mentally hurting. They will be spiritually bankrupt when they walk through the doors. But you can see it happen almost with all of them. They come into these safe walls and they start to lighten up. And that's because what? They're introduced to a community. They become part of something that's bigger than themselves. And we all need to be part of something that's bigger than ourselves. It's all about community. We actually have a name for it in the, in the rehab sector. It's called what when they get on this? It's called they get on a pink cloud. And it happens with everybody that goes into rehab. <coughs> And it's all about the community that's around them. I want to ask you all in, in closing here this morning, I want to ask you to do me a favor, to do me and Tom a favor. I'm excited about the community that we've created here at Step 7. We've put together a DNA that hopefully says, you come as you are. And if you slip and fall, 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 you keep coming as you are. Amen. Because we do not shoot our wounded around here. Amen. Amen. This is all about community. I would like to ask you guys to help us. Help Tom and I. Tom's bigger on this than I am. Help us to think of some ways that we can do things in community, okay? There's some people getting together at the Paoli House to watch the Super Bowl tomorrow. Let's party, my friends. <laughs> Jesus loved a good party, okay? Let's be a loving community, because again, you guys, I believe with all of my heart that one of the greatest cures for addiction is a loving Christian <coughs> community. Let's mm -hmm. pray. Father God, we, we thank you. We thank you for your teachings, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you loved a good party, Lord. And I just pray that you, you help us to recognize how important community needs to be in our lives. You tell us in Genesis chapter 2, it is not good for the man to be alone. Help us to remember that, Lord, and help us to come together. Help us to not forget to come together in fellowship, in love, in laughter, Lord, as we celebrate all the gifts that you have given us. And we love you, Lord, and we thank you, and as we always do, we lift up our prayers. 
In that precious, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thanks, everybody.